hindi ko maalala. So, I just posted this last Saturday. Tuesday. Gusto niyo bang Thursday na lang or okay na sa inyo yan? Tuesday next week. Ah, people power ba? Oo nga, no. So, walang klase, no? Tama ba? Wala bang klase pa people power? Hindi ko na maalala, eh. So, si wala, siguro. So, sige, Thursday na lang tayo. 27? February 27? So I just uh, 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 move the schedule, okay? So, great. Let's continue. So we're still in the virtualization part, and basically, I think uh, <coughs> we're finishing today uh, scheduling, multiprocessor scheduling. Okay, so. So again, we are still in the virtualization of the CPU, and what we are talking about today is more on the policy, okay? meaning how does the operating de system decides where to execute or what process to execute next on the CPU? If you only have one CPU, we have uh, we have uh, different algorithms for that, and if you have multiple uh, CPUs, we also have algorithms for that. But in a way, it's more complicated for uh, multiprocessor uh, scheduling, okay? So uh, I think we finished last, okay. So I think we finished last time with uh, single, the issues with uh, single queue, multiprocessor scheduling, okay? So as I was saying a while ago, so you have lag of scalability and cash affinity as the disadvantages of uh, uh, single queue multiprocessor scheduling because you only have a single queue here. If you increase the number of processors, okay, contention will happen to access the shared data structure and of course cash affinity because again uh, uh, the data being used by a process usually is uh, Pag nilo-load na, malapit sa CPU to improve the performance. Wala kang magagawa nun kasi hardware yun eh. If you're, uh, yeah, so it's, it's hardware uh, issue. So, uh, one possible uh, way to remedy that is by uh, process migration. Okay? So, process migration, uh, so you, for example, as shown here, E can move, uh, A will be, uh, allocate or will be assigned to CPU 0 B, but E can move across the different processors. Okay? So it's called uh, uh, process migration, okay? but you preserve the affinity for others. Okay? So uh, the solution is to use multiple queues for each uh, processor. So instead of just having one queue, okay, you associate a queue for each processor. So we have a queue here. All of the processes will uh, go here. Then you have another queue here. All of the processes will go to this CPU. Okay? And this will avoid uh, information sharing and basically synchronization. Because you know already that once this process gets assigned to this queue, you are guaranteed that that process will move to this queue, uh, will be assigned to this CPU. Okay? So that's the essence of that. And for example, if you have a round-robin scheduler, okay, where you have a time slice, okay, uh, it's possible to create a schedule like this. So for Q0, meaning these are the processes that will run on CPU0, this will be the schedule. For uh, Q1, which are the Q4 processes that will run on CPU1, this will be the procedure. Okay? So it provides more scalability, uh, if you add more CPUs, you simply add more queues and cache affinity. So you know that all of these processes, these two here, will just uh, stay here. So if you have a large cache here, it can accommodate both the data from A and B, both A and C. 
Okay, so that will be loaded to the cache, both the data for both A and C, if you have a large cache, CPU cache. Okay? So that will uh, uh, prevent a uh, problem with cache affinity. Now, the problem is a uh, load imbalance. Okay? So what if uh, at the start of, uh, uh, example, you you're given this uh, initial uh, configuration, and then after a while, C finishes, meaning uh, Q0 only has one process in the queue, in its queue, which is A. So uh, it will uh, run uh, A. So kung baga solo niya, yung CPU 0. Pero yung CPU 1, nagjajagal siya between uh, B and D. Okay? So parang sayang naman nung, ano, nung uh, kung baga, uh, dito nag-share pa sila, eh ito, parang halimbawa, yung ginagawa nito, hindi naman, ano, hindi naman, kailangan ng mat mat mabilis na or yung mag matas na response time, mabilis na response time. So, parang sayang. So, A gets twice as much as CPU as B and D. It's a problem. And, the more interesting uh, configuration will happen if Q0 is done. Meaning, uh, A is done. So, meaning Q0 is empty. And, since you have a uh, hard-coded or dedicated queue for each CPU, this CPU is idle. The load is zero, whereas CPU1 is busy. So what happened? So there is a load in one. So how do you solve this? So this is one of the issues uh, that is uh, that must be addressed in uh, multi-queue, multi scale So one, one way to do that is uh, migration. Okay? So uh, the operating system should be able to move uh, should be able to check, ah, yung isang queue, empty. Medyo madami dito. Maybe I can move uh, some of the processes to that queue. Okay? Or, uh, in any configuration, based on the algorithm that the operating system is implementing. Okay? So, uh, what's this? Uh, a more uh, tricky case. Okay? So, uh, okay, so, this one has something to do with the, the pattern, of course, for uh, switching. So uh, you can have some uh, interleaving here. Okay. So you can migrate to CPU 0, this one, migrate to CPU, uh, migrate A to CPU 1. Okay. So the juggling of the uh, uh, processes across the different uh, CPUs. Okay? So, Okay, so how how does that uh, how does you know, the question the next question is how does the OS determines the uh, uh, which CPU is uh, not loaded, right? So one solution is uh, called work stealing. Right? Sana ganito, sana all. Right? Para ang mangyari dito is takita ng isang tao na, na walang ginagawa, ano maraming ginagawa yung isa, kukunin niya. So it's called work stealing. But, okay, so how is that done here? Okay, so uh, a source queue that is slow on, on jobs is picked or on processes, okay? And then the source queue occasionally picks at another target queue, okay? Uh, if the target queue is more full but than the source queue, the source will steal one more job from the target queue, okay? So that is the essence, basically. Yung iba naman, actually, this is called a pool mechanism. Kasi kukuha ka ng, ano eh, kukuha ka ng uh, process dun sa, ano, sa, ba uh, ito? So, pu pool, ito, kukunin niya yan. Yung iba naman, ang tawag ay push. Puno na ako, nakakita siya ng, ano, nakakita siya ng bakante, ibibigay niya sa kanila. Okay? So, that's the, the idea of or how the operating system does this, so uh, by uh, uh, work stealing. Okay. So of course, there will be overhead to do this because from time to time, the operating system, the scheduling must be interrupted and then the queues must be observed to determine whether which one is heavy and which one is light in terms of load, right? So in Linux, you have different uh, schedulers okay so uh, you have o of one okay so for those who are familiar with uh, uh, everybody is familiar with the o notation asymptotic notation so it's constant so it's a priority based scheduler 
it uses multiple queues okay? it changes process priority over time okay? uh, schedule those with the highest priority and interactivity is a particular focus uh, during the early days nung nirelease tong scheduler na to uh, red hat pa yata yung ginagamit ko nun so uh, parang lumang scheduler pa yung ginagamit ng linux so sabi ko so subukan kung Kasi ang, ang purpose ng scheduler na to is interactivity eh. So, ibig sabihin, kung may GUI ka, tapos uh, you have uh, desktop environment, mas mabilis dapat yung performance niya. Or mas maganda yung pakiramdam mo habang ginagamit mo yung desktop kumpara sa ibang scheduler. So, what I did was uh, I, I recompiled the kernel to enable this uh, scheduler. And maganda na yung performance niya. But over time, uh, nagkaroon din ng ano, uh, issues actually parang mga bugs yung scheduler to so i have to revert back to the old kernel okay. so another scheduler is cfs i don't know the, uh, what is being used in i think in ubuntu by default it's using cfs okay so it's deterministic proportional share approach uh, you can uh, there's a chapter in the textbook that describes the the that te the techniques used by the CFS, so it's deterministic proportional share approach. So since this is deterministic, this is more, more like a fair share scheduling, okay? So more or similar to the stride scheduling that we discussed, okay? So wala siyang dateri, pero fair share, okay? So that's one uh, priority. Now remember, when you design the scheduler, you have to consider performance ba, fair use of the processor ba. Okay, so this one is uses. And this one uses, again, they, they both of them use multiple queues. Kasi, uh, 386 uh, single processor lang yan, which was the original when Linux Torvalds uh, built or created uh, Linux, he was using, I think, a 386 or 286, so single processor lang yan. So eventually, uh, at Pentium, dumami na yung mga, ano, yung number of cores. Okay? So, naging multiprocessor na rin yung, ano, yung uh, Linux, uh, nag-support na rin ng multiprocessor yung Linux. So, it implemented uh, multiple queues, okay? Instead of a single queue. Single queue, multiprocessor scheduler. Okay? And then the BF scheduler, on the other hand, uses a single queue approach, okay? And is proportional share okay? and uh, based on some I don't know uh, algorithm okay? uh, earliest eligible virtual deadline so actually you can read about the details of how uh, the Linux uh, if you're interested really in, the, uh, in detail the details of how how the Linux kernel schedules processes selects from this uh, you, you can actually learn more about that uh, uh, by just reading the book and reading other sources. Okay, so that's an interesting uh, uh, study. Okay? So are there questions about uh, that multiprocessor scheduling? Kasi pagkatapos nun, that's under the virtualization of the CPU. Yung next topic na natin is virtualization of the memory. So I hope that you have understood now na, okay, uh, may processor tayo. Ito yung trabaho ng operating system. Okay, and been virtualized lang siya. And the previous chapters uh, basically discuss that. Okay, so that's uh, the first part. Okay, if you don't have questions about that, we're now going to move on to the next uh, virtualization called uh, the memory virtualization. Okay. So again, the first part is talks about virtualization. Virtualization of the computing resources. There are three main resources in a computer system. We have the processor, we have the memory, and we have the storage. So, nandun tayo sa second, which is virtualization of the memory. Why is the memory important? Because in order for the CPU to be able to execute the instructions, the code and the data should be in the main memory. So the operating system so should somehow manage the memory. 
Okay. So we now move on to the next topic, which is memory virtualization. So what is memory virtualization? Uh, the operating system virtualizes its physical memory. Uh, so what we do? Nagawang dito kayo meron tayong instruction memory, tapos meron tayong data memory, which is for uh, single cycle, for example. Uh, those when when we when when we look at memory in Comsai 132, we look at physical memory, okay? Okay. So, kung wala pang OS, as ginagamit mo yung memory, you look at it in a, at the physical level. Kung ano yung actual na memory? Yung memory you can think of the memory as an array of bytes. So, that's a physical memory, okay? Now, the OS provides an illusion, okay? uh, 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 illusion memory space per, uh, for each process. Okay? Now, dumating na yung OS. So, ang gagawin ng OS, lulokohin natin yung mga processes. Hindi man lulokohin. Uh, Titrick natin sila na, kunwari, sila yung may access ng entire physical memory. Okay? So, yung tawag doon actually ay virtual memory. So, at this point, Siguro, in 1, 2, 5, you should be able to differentiate between virtual memory and uh, physical memory. So 1, 3, 2, when we talk of memory, dun sa design, ha, sa pag-design ng data path, we look at physical memory. But sa OS, virtual memory. Okay? But merong, may, merong translation na nangyayari nun. Okay? So it seems to be seen like each process uses the whole memory. So sa 131, pinakita ko na to. Okay? I showed you two programs. Dinibag ko siya. Uh, isang program lang. Nag-create ako ng process, dalawang process, na naka-open sa GDB. Pag tinignan mo yung memory addresses nila, makakita mo pareho. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, pwede ba yun? Magkasama sila sa, ano, sa, sa isang physical memory. Hindi, hindi yun. Okay? Ang nakikita mo dun sa loob ng GDB is the virtual address not necessarily the physical address, okay? So, what are the benefits of memory virtualization, okay? Ease of use in programming, okay? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, kung programmer ka, ayan, nagagawa ng C program, you don't have to be very particular kung saan mo ilalagay yung ano, saan mo ilalagay yung data item na gagamitin mo sa program. Okay. Uh, that means that basta kailangan ko ng memory. Okay. Give me the address, I will use that memory. Doesn't care. You don't care about kung saan. And to simplify things further, parang binibigyan ka ng illusion na pag-aari mo yung buong memory. Let's say 4 GB yung memory mo. Yung RAM mo 4 GB. Okay, wala kayo. Pag gumawa ka ng program using virtual memory, feeling mo, sa iyo yan, buong 4GB na yan. So ito, feeling niya, process A, sa kanya yung 4GB, process B, sa kanya yung 4GB, process sa kanya yung 4GB. Pero, yung physical memory niya ay 4GB lang talaga. You get the idea? Okay. So yun yung idea. Ayun yung isa advantages. Uh, memory efficiency in terms of times and space. Okay? So again, uh, you have uh, more uh, efficient use of memory. Okay? The main reason is at some point, bilipat-lipat naman sila, so pwede mong tanggalin yung iba sa memory. Okay? So tatlong processes, okay? ang feeling nila, tig-iisa silang 4 gigabyte, pero hindi naman pala. So somehow, you have a limited uh, memory, pero marami kang pwedeng mag-iran sa kanya. Okay? You get the idea? So, yeah. So, it's faster. Okay? Of course, yung it saves space. Okay? Uh, the guarantee of isolation for processes as well as OS. So, kung may virtual memory ka, okay, pwede ka mag-enforce uh, ng uh, protection mechanism. Okay? Na kung saan, uh, kahit sabihin na natin na uh, si process A, si process B, saka si process C, uh, feeling nila meron silang 4GB in memory, 
yung operating system is yung virtual memory, pwede niya actually kontrolin kung saan si A, hindi niya pwede galawin yung memory na ginagamit ni B, tapos si B, hindi niya pwede galawin yung memory na ginagamit ni C. Get the idea? So, that's one advantage. And later, we're going to look at how, how this is accomplished by the operating system. Okay. So, yeah, those are the benefits. Okay. So, so, let's look back at some history. Okay, yung x86, hindi mo na yung about yung memo ka ng x86, yung DOS pa yung operating system, halos ganito yung, ano, halos ganito yung isura ng, ano, ng memory. Okay? So, uh, during the other system, may ba yung DOS, inalagay niya yung sarili niya doon sa uh, first uh, uh, few kilobytes of memory. Kung naalala niyo yung, ano na, kung naalala niyo yung, exercise natin sa bootloader, yung load kernel, kailangan mo mag-specify ng address doon kung saan mo i-read yung kernel, di ba? Tama ba? So, yun yun. Right? So, during the boot process, ang gagawin ng bootloader, hahanapin niya sa disk yung ano, well, primitive pa yung ginawa natin, hahanapin niya yun sa sector 2, yung kernel, i-read niya sa memory, tapos, mag-jump na siya doon, mag-start na ngayon doon yung kernel. Okay. Now, halimbawa, nag-create ka ng process, ng program, meron certain allocated na area para sa process na During the early days, isang program, in addition to the operating system, only one program can run at a time. Okay. Yeah, ito yung mag-iari. So, the first 64 kilobytes is allocated to the operating system. Remember, yung operating system, di ba sabi ko? Nag-i-execute ko sa CPU. Okay. Right. So, and this is the, take note, this is the physical memory. Okay. Yeah. Now, the problem is poor utilization and efficiency because, uh, ito, isang process lang. What if gusto kang, gusto kang maraming process? Ang gagawin mo, gagawin ang operating system, tatanggalin niya yan, papalitan niya ni B. Ganun yung mangyayari. Ibig sabihin, only one user program is in the main memory during the early systems. Okay? So, siyempre, nag-improve yung hardware, nagkaroon ng demand for multi-programming and time sharing. So, ito, single programming lang to. Okay? Isang program, isang process lang. Basta, let's think of it like this. Pag nasa memory, think of it as process. Okay? So, single process lang. Pag nasa disk program, ano lang yung ano natin, uh, differentiation natin. So, sa multi-programming, you can have many processes in the memory uh, at a given time. Compare this to this. Okay? Kasi lumaki na yung memory. Siguro, during the early days, maliit lang yung memory. KB lang. So, isa lang talaga ang pwede mong ilagay na process. Pero, pag lumaki na yung memory mo, parang sayang naman. O halimbawa, uh, ganito kalaki yung memory mo, tapos yung process na iraan mo, hanggang dito lang, sayang naman ito. Diba? So why don't we implement a multi-programming? So we have here CBMA, all in the main memory, physical memory. Okay? So that's loading multiple process and memory. Okay? And yung time sharing would mean uh, executing one process for a short while. Remember yung non-preemptive and preemptive scheduling natin sa processor? Okay. So, pag sinabing time sharing, you can think of this yung parang round robin. Okay. May, may time quantum. Okay. So, multi-programming, madaming, madaming processes sa memory. Time sharing, bawat isang process will be given a chance to execute on the CPU. You get the idea? So there should be some way for the operating system to be able to support that. Right? So uh, basically this is what is being done in the CPU scheduling. Right? So this increases utilization and efficiency. Right? So lahat ng processes may chance kasi nasa memory na sila and you have multiple processes in the main memory. Okay? And 
the main issue, if you have, so dito ang example, the size of the memory is 512 KB. During the early days, 64 MB na RAM, masaya na kami. Okay. Uh, mga 286 ya, 386. Okay. Uh, pero ngayon, gigabytes na. 8 gig na siguro yung laptop nyo, or more. Okay. So, yan, imagine na ang dami na pwede yung ilagay sa memory. So, the problem is protection issue. Okay. Paano mo i-guarantee na si Process C hindi niya imumagbaw? May, may, may variable dito si B. Dapat si C, hindi niya pwedeng galawin yung variable ni C. Nandito kay B. Okay. Uh, or, worst case, si Process C, yung ordinary user program, dapat hindi niya kayang galawin yung operating system. Okay. Ganito yung ginagawa namin nung DOS pa. Okay. Pag gumagawa namin ng virus. Uh, ito kasi walang protection. Okay. So, pag magawa ka ng assembly code, pwede mong i-determine yung memory location ng mga functions na nandito sa DOS kernel. Okay. And you can actually modify them to point to your own code. Okay. So, pwede mong i-replicate yung virus through that mechanism. Okay. Pero ngayon, kung Linux ka or Windows ka, you'll have some... Meron ng protection, syempre. Kasi una, may hardware support na. Okay. And that kasi wala. Okay. Especially if you're uh, you, you running 286. Okay. Walang protected mode. Uh, yung uh, basic mode na. Okay? So, how does the operating do that? Okay? So, uh, we'll discuss more of that later. Now, Let's look at the address space. Ano right? pag sinabi yung address space? So, the operating system, di ba, when we discuss about uh, the program being on the disk, okay? lulog sa memory, okay? mag-fork, etc., etc. So, yung pairing process, meron na siyang address space. When you say address space, ito yung ano, uh, memory area na kinalalagyan ng process. Okay. So, pinakita na naman natin yan. Hindi uh, ko na napakil, basa mong sawa na kayo, mag-open ako ng GDB tapos info proc mapping para ipakita ko yung memory uh, locations doon. Right. But this is the idea. So, you have the program code, maybe you have some data before this, after this, and then you have the heap for dynamic memory, which grows uh, upward and the stack grows downward. Rita is the Rita is the same. But the stack grows downward. When you, when you say grows downward, you memory address to my right? And he grows upward, you memory address to my okay? Actually, you grows uh, upward to memory address. So this is a typical address space of a uh, program or of a process and the operating system allocates this. Right? So when it creates a process. So uh, you're all familiar with this from COMSA 131, probably. You have the code, the heap, uh, malloc, or kung, kung C++ new. Sino na program C++ dito sa inyo? Okay, so you have a new to allocate a new object. Kung Java naman, ganun din. Pero, masyado nang, yung Java kasi, may Java virtual machine siya. Eh. Whereas in C++, yung translation niya, direct, directly sa, ano, sa, sa assembly. So, may mga level of indirection lang. But, uh, ito, sa, ano to, sa, sa, Java, sa C++ na lang. Then, yes, the stack is used to store the return address or values and contains local variables and arguments to it. We'll have some illustration later. So, this is the address space. So, uh, ano gusto kong barma ano nyo dito, ma take away nyo dito, is whenever you have a running program, lag, when you have a process, lagi nyo dapat may imagine to. Okay? Whenever you are running Firefox, you are running uh, uh, terminal, may imagine nyo dapat, ah, ito yung isura nyo sa memory. That's what I mean that, right? And, so, yung address space na to actually is called the virtual address space kasi siya yung nakikita 
pag may operating system ka na, lahat ng nag, pag nag-load na yung operating system mo, lahat ng address na piniprint mo dyan sa program mo, lahat dyan virtual addresses. Okay, you get the idea? Lahat dyan virtual addresses. So, yung nito ko, ano kaya ginagawa nito? Kaya yung ibang interpret, yung ginagawa nito? So, a simple program that prints out addresses. Tingnan nyo, uh, location of code void starting. Ano yung sabihin nito? Remember, yung mga functions sa, sa C are basically addresses. Location and memory. Mga labels na lang yan sa assembly. May address yan. Okay. So, if you print this, you'll see some values to that. Okay. So, main, this is the function name. Okay. So, you can act, each function is actually a pointer. May memory address yan. So, we'll do this with put the, to display the address of name while it's running. Kung saan siya nilagay ng, ng operating system sa virtual memory. Okay. And then, this one is heap. Okay. So, ito, ang ginawa niya, nag-allocate siya ng memory, one byte, okay. and then, in-output niya na, percent key pointer, kung saan nakalagay yung na-allocate. Remember, yung malloc, na-refer niya yung address kung saan in-allocate yung memory, di ba? So, in-output niya, Basically, what happens is, the output in your location of key, right? Right? And this, this is a function, and x here is a local variable. This local variable will be placed in the stack. Okay? Do you agree? So, ito na yung pangyayari. The output niya ngayon yung address in x. So, pag nag-run yan, nakakita niya na. May, out, may output ba ito? Hindi ko. Ayan, ito yung output niya. So, hindi ko na, again, hindi ko na i-open yung GDB para ipakita yung info proc mapping. Okay. But, this is the output of the previous code. Okay. So, kapag yung stack, nasa dulo. Okay. Then, you have the data in the input. Okay, malino ba yun? So, whenever you see running programs, dapat lagi na nang i-imagine, ah, yung address space niyan, ganito. Okay? So, tapos na. Tapos na ba? Are there questions about this uh, uh, topic? The details of this are in the book. Okay? Napaka, napaka light reading yung ano. Kahit nasa bus ka, pwede mong basahin yung naiintindihan mo actually. Okay? So, uh, the rest will just be trying to, uh, yung mga hands-on na lang, to for understand that it's basically better to do some hands-on and try on some exercise. Now, we have an interlude here, which is the memory API. So, this basically, before the details ng operating system, itong mem memory API, di ba, last time meron tayong process API, yung fork, exec, wait uh, combination. Okay? Ito naman, meron tayong memory API. Kasi, when we write programs, we use memory. Okay? And normally, if we have, uh, if we need, uh, data, we place them in memory as global variables, local variables, uh, allocated or dynamic memory, etc. So, the operating system should provide an API on how to allocate memory. Okay? So, the very fundamental, the basic way to make use of, to allocate memory is the malloc. Okay? So this is very important, linked list, pointers. Uh, when you create a new process, uh, you need to allocate memory. Okay. So, so ano yung mga ginagawa niya? So it's part of the standard, it's actually part of the C library, standard C library. So it returns a void pointer, uh, the function name and size t. It allocates a memory region on the heap. The argument is the size t. Okay? So, bakit size t yan? Bakit hindi in? Bakit hindi kung ano man? Bakit hindi byte? Bakit hindi car? Bakit size t? Okay? For portability. Okay? So, different architectures will have different sizes, word sizes, and uh, engines. So, pag ginawa mo yung size underscore t, somehow mas magiging portable yung code mo. Kahit saan mo i-run yung code mo, yung architecture, kung ano man yung naka-hash defined dito, yun yung gagamitin niya. Okay? It's the size of the memory block in bytes. 
and uh, it's usually an, an assigned integer type okay so success uh ang return is avoid type pointer that must be type casted okay and uh, null naman siya pag fail okay so uh Routines and macros are utilized for size in malloc instead of typing in a uh, number directly. So, bakit? Okay. Kasi magkakaroon ka ng problema pag hindi, uh, pag hindi ka gumamit ng size of operator. Okay. So, ano yung, ano, ano yung example na to? Okay. Two types of results of size of with variable. So, the first part here, it start uh, it star x was malloc 10 times size of int. Okay. Uh, so, yung, yung size ng int depende sa architecture. Kung 32 bits, so, uh, ah, yung int pala, yan, uh, depende, depende. But it's usually uh, 32 bits. Okay. So, pag ang ginawa ko ay uh, size of x, Ang output niya dito ay 4. Okay? Kasi ang ginamit kong variable, ang ginamit kong parameter ng size of ay yung variable niya yung x. Okay? So, although, ang ina-expect mo, 10 times 4, di ba? 10 kasi yun, 10 times 4. 40 dapat. Kaso, since variable x yung ginamit mo, ito lang yung trade niya. Okay? So, pointer type siya, for yun na nabas na niya. Okay. Now, in contrast na with this, in x10, okay. x din yung dinamit mo, okay. variable name mo ay x, okay. ang ilabas na ay 40, which is what you expected, right? Kasi 4 times 10, may 40. Okay. Bakit yung sa kapila? For that, okay. It's because of the available information. Okay. So, ito, uh, yung actual value ng x, runtime pa malalaman. Okay? Ibig sabihin, habang nagaran yung program. Ito, habang kinukumpile mo siya, okay, mariresolve mo na agad yung value ng x. Okay? Which is, uh, uh, mariresolve mo na agad yung size x. Habang kinukumpile pa lang siya, alam na agad ng compiler. Pag binugan niya yung assembly code, 40 ang ilalabas niya. Kasi alam niya na yan eh. Kasi sa array, di ba, malintern niya na yan. Pag-pinars ng compiler yung, ano, yung array, uh, array declaration. Okay? So, yun. So, if you have, if you use a memory, di ba, sa 1, 2, 3, Sir Arian, so, pointers and then link list, okay, delete a node. Kailangan proper yung uh, allocation, the allocation mo, yung sequence. So, the opposite of malloc is free. Okay? So, it frees a memory region allocated by a call to malloc. Why should you free? Why should you free? Okay? Uh, the memory allocated uh, to conserve memory. Okay? So, remember, uh, bakit kailangan natin mag-free? Okay? Remember the process address space. Pag nagmalo tayo ng nagmalo, uh, yung operating system, nag-allocate somehow, kumbaga parang, uh, sabihin natin may, may 4 gigabyte ka, may 4 gigabyte ka, tapos nag-for loop ka ng nag-for loop ng malo. Ang mag-ayari dyan, ma-occupy mo yung lahat, kung hindi mo finito. So, okay, error, mag-output memory error ka. Okay, get the idea? So you need to uh, free the memory or that al that was allocated using malo para ano, uh, let's say 1 million nodes or 10 million nodes ng link list okay. na allocated na hindi mo finito. So kung okay, yan, yeah, so, kung may repression ka, magbabangga at kasi lang na lawa. Okay. So, some, you get the idea? Okay. So, we'll stop here and uh, for the lab, mamaya, uh, mag lang kayo ng simulations. Okay? So, tatlong parts yun. Okay? So, uh, unlike before na kailangan yung mag-code ng CPU scheduling algorithms, 
hindi na ngayon ano na magte-try lang kayo ng mag-observe lang kayo ng ano na pwede niyo aralin yung code kung paano i-implement pero mag-observe lang kayo ng behavior and try to answer some problems so before you go to the lab this afternoon please review yung iba't ibang scheduling algorithms and of course yung processes ah uh, yung uh, FIFO yung round robin yung SJF saka yung uh, lottery scheduling okay bago kayo pumasok sa lab para madali na i-review niyo yung topics na yon para madali na yung okay so